up and into the pesky pole. And that's going to get down the line. That one looks like it'll stay fair. And goodbye, home run. The pesky pole. The 2-2. Bringing a five ball deep down the right field line. Slicing by the pesky pole. And that ball hits the pesky pole. Which means it's going home run. 3-2 high fly down the right field line. Slicing toward the pesky pole into the corner. And that ball is gone. A green can. Now in a high fly down the right field line, headed toward the pesky pole. Is he going to tuck it inside? Indeed he does. That is gone. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Pesky Podcast. I am your host, The Rit. With me is my head writer, Mr. George Sutherland. George, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, things are good. Um... Yeah, we're, uh, it's, it's a nice fall day in New England. It's absolutely gorgeous, you know, can, after the storm over the weekend. We deserve a few nice days. So, you know, it's been really, really good. So enjoying this big time. Yeah, disappointing when you sit there and messaged me last week and was like, yeah, well, we can't sit there and I can't go to the game because, because of the I, storm. Yeah, and trying to clean up, I, I twisted my ankle. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to try to walk up and down stairs and, Usually I park up on the hill opposite the stadium, so I wasn't going to try to do that. So safety first. So, yeah. So, anyways, a lot's been happen- uh, happening since uh, you and I talked last. And a lot's been happening since DC and I uh, did the podcast on Sunday. Yep. Uh, you know, we're not going to be talking about GM stuff all the time. You know, it's going to get boring. But uh, guess who's back? Tristan Casas went on the DL, IL, IL and yep. well, our beloved Bobby D comes back, and man, he's uh, he's not doing too bad since he's come back up. Uh, there was an interview where they where they asked him, and he's changed a, a few things, worked on a few things yep. uh, during the season down in AAA. And uh, Bobby Dahl back in, you know, he's batted a 273, four runs. He's got a stolen base. He's got a dinger, a home run. His uh, on-base percentage is 360. So uh, Bobby's, you know, he's back up at the big league, and he's got smiles. He, he's he's grateful for being up there. Yep. Uh, have you noticed anything different about him uh, when he's being up on the major league roster again? I think he knows that this may be his chance to make somebody else's roster going into 2024. He seems much more relaxed. Okay. I mean, last year, you know, he looked like, you know, he was looking over his shoulder every two minutes going, you know, somebody going to take me out of the lineup. Um, you know, he had some abysmal periods last year. I think in AAA, he's matured a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, who's it? Uh, Tracy Chad. It was a Chad. Tra- was it Chad Tracy. Chad yeah, Tracy. Yeah, who's the manager down there? I think he settled him down a little bit, and he, you know, you knew you knew in the middle of the season he wasn't coming up. Okay, that was abundantly clear. They were riding. They, they were going to ride Casas as long as they could, barring injury. Injury happens. He's up. He he's going. Um, I think he's going to try to take as much advantage of this as possible. Realizing that some t- team will say, hmm, right-handed bat, got some pop, can play the corner infield and play right field too. You know, not a bad addition to the roster. You know, and he's still making uh, league men, so, you know, th- that's a plus as well. Yeah, um, and he, he's he's filled right in, you know, at first base. Uh, some people even might go and say that Bobby's D – is a lot better at, at first base than Casas. Uh, at well, this stage of his Casas? career, yes. Because yes. Bobby's had, what, four, three, four years now? Remember, Bobby was no whiz kid at, on the bag either when he first came up. He made errors. He came up through the minors as a third baseman. He's made tremendous strides on his defense, okay? Um, and the other thing is he's been a good soldier for the organization. You know, he went down, didn't mouth off, did his thing. Every other GM in the league is going to look at that and say, you know, quality guy. So I, I hope he does extremely well. He got two hits today. 
you know, he's, you know, he's slapping the ball. He's not trying to overswing. You know, he's doing all the things he should have been doing all the way along. But I think he's found himself. And I really hope he finds a, a spot on a major league roster next year. I just honestly don't think it's, you know, Boston. I think they're going to use him as a trade chip in a minor trade somewhere. Yeah, uh, including the game at Texas, he's batting uh, – went up over uh, 300. He's batting 308 now. Great, I think, right? Yeah. You know, an 879 OPS, that's that's pretty good, Yeah. you know, for, for him coming up. Uh, maybe because there's not a, a, a not a lot of pressure on him, you know. Yes. Uh, maybe that might sit there and help him. Uh, let's sit there and go with overall down in the minor leagues. This year, he had 82 runs, 413 at bats, 111 hits, uh, 14 doubles, three triples, 33 home runs. So 79 ribbies, 64 walks. Uh, his average was 269. So and his OPS 938. How many times did he strike out? Struck out 169 times. Um, 100, 169 times and 413 at bats. Not great, but better than it was. So. Yeah. So I, I just think that Bobby sits there and he, he he just wants to have fun, you know, go back yeah. to the having fun and everything. So. No, I think he's. Yeah, he's playing. He, he's playing playing the bigs next year. So yeah, you know, more power to him. Wish him all the luck in the world. He's been a good kid, particularly this year, given everything that's gone on. He's he's been a stand up guy. You know, I, if, I wish him nothing but the best if he doesn't stick around in Boston. So, George, if JT is not signed with the Red Sox, does Bobby Dahlbeck have a chance to come up to play the exact same positions, first and third, yeah. just like JT would, uh, minus the leadership, the veteran presence? You know, uh, what are your thoughts? I I, I think that if Turner decides to go elsewhere. It would not be a. It would not be the worst thing the Red Sox could do, you know. Plus, if you know somebody, you know somebody gets you know gets tweaks a hammy or something like that, and he's a couple of days off, you know, you can put him in right field. He's got a cannon for an arm, and he's you know he's a he's a very serviceable third baseman. Look, we know what we're dealing with with Raffy, okay? You know, Raffy is what he is. He's never he will never be a Gold Glove third baseman, okay? You just hope he can kind of cut down the errors and you know not, not lose his mind. He looks he the, the, it's the he doesn't there are so many times he loses focus, it's stupid. Right? I mean you talked about that before. Mm -hmm. I mean it's like, come on, man. You know, stay focused. Yeah, and it's sometimes I I think that it's just he misses his buddy, you know, next to him. To keep to keep him focused, to keep them you know, his head in the game. Uh, I know Christina and Melissa said when they were down there in Houston playing and they were watching, they sit there and said, like, Devers was looking all around. You know, he wasn't really paying attention. And yeah. it's like, man, like, like, what is wrong with him? He's still in many ways a kid, you know? You know, you get your own kids, right? You want them, to, you, know, you sit them down at the dining room table and tell them to do their homework. And the next thing you know, they're going, you know, looking out the window, you know, playing with the cat or the dog or, or, or whatever, right? You know, totally missing it. And there are times he, he behaves like that, you know. And, I, you know, I, he needs to he needs to improve that. I mean, you know, Lord knows he's got the physical skills to, to punish a baseball. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but. You know, it's on defense where he totally loses it. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, Devers personally, uh, what does that – how many home runs does Devers have this year? 30, it's over 30. Four, 33. Hang on. Uh, yeah, it's it, – I'm, I'm pretty sure – I know it's over 30. And his, uh, 
He's had it for 30, 33 home runs. And yeah, yeah he's got he's 33 had, and 98. Yep. You know, it, it's it's crazy how he, he's looking close to his 2021 numbers where yeah, he had exactly. 38 home runs, 113 uh, RBIs. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just crazy. You know, he his average is 275 two, in 2021. It was 279. He, you know, he, 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 is, he has, remember his his average for a while was hovering around two forty. Yeah, right. And, and he's really so he's turning it on. It, he's really picked it up a little, so that that's really really good. So I mean, you know, I, he he's made some adjustments. He's starting to put the ball and play more, taking the base hit, not trying to drive the ball out of the ballpark as much. Take the home runs when they come. Um, now, if he could just you know say, okay, I got to play defense. I got to relax. I got to do it. I can't lax a days ago. I've got to be focused on this. Remember that my my play matters. So that's 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 how leadership is done. Lead by example. Yeah, and uh, let's move on to you know leadership as we're saying. Uh, AC. So you know just just watching him, and you know watching the games, you know being played, the mistakes. Yep. How ready do you think a uh, ready do you think AC is just for the off season? Like these last two weeks, he's got to be like, man, it's it, let's just hurry and speed these things up. Um, I, I have noticed when I've watched the games in the last couple of days, he's smiling more on the bench. He knows that they're out of it. He's relaxed a little bit. Um, he's also, you know, you got to remember this year. Uh, I don't think Bloom was one of his favorite people. Okay, I think behind the scenes there was there was a lot of friction there. All right, and I think there were times during the season where you know AC would roll out certain pitchers. Okay, and we'd all go, "Oh my God, what are you doing?" And he's you know basically he was basically you know messaging Bloom, "Hey, this is the shit you gave me to work with," right? So, you know, that said, uh, I think he, he's there's a weight off his back. He didn't get canned when Bloom got canned. Um, not yet, not yet, not yet. Well, I, look, I think man, I think management loves him. Okay, uh, they've demonstrated that. I think they felt that he wasn't given all the tools in his tool bag. Okay, I mean, you look at that pitching staff. You were guys that shouldn't have seen the major leagues. Yeah, we got a couple of fines, right? You know, that was good. You know, guys like Bernardino, mm-hmm. like, where'd he come from, right? But at the same time, you know, you're, you know, Kyle Baraclaw, Justin Gaza, you know, we're, what are you doing, man? You know? There were times when I thought they just were bringing up these kids from Triple A yeah. to eat innings on purpose and fail. Yes. Yeah, I. I and and AC's, you know, basically looked at, you know, was probably looking at. Uh, Bloom and saying, "Are you out of your mind?" You know, I mean, he, you know, AC played in the bigs for what eight years, something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, he's not stupid. You know, he knows good from good and bad from bad, and you know, you could tell. I mean, it's like, okay, it, it was kind of got to the end where he was like, "Okay, buddy, I'll show you." You know, um, and I don't, I, I wouldn't say it was on purpose, but he didn't do anything to curb his. Uh, angst about the situation and mm-hmm. kind of let things roll where they were. You know, if it was a, if they were like a game out in a pennant race, you know, he'd have moved heaven and earth. But again, he wasn't going to get any support at the trade deadline. So, you know, here we go. We're going back to that whole thing again. Exactly. Uh, I, I think, I think, you know, after the season's over, they're going to huddle up like they always do for two or three days. What's good, what's bad, whatever. I think AC takes off for a week or so, okay, comes back for the general manager meetings. Now, the only thing that changes is if the front office says, okay, buddy, we love you. We want you to stay with the organization. We're going to make a, an assistant general manager, okay? Mm-hmm. You can learn a little bit more about the front office. You're a smart guy. The players respect you. You know, you got the good rapport with the players. We're going to try you on that, okay? He's – at that point, you put Viratech in as the um, – the manager, you know, big surprise, right? I mean, everybody mm-hmm. knew 
player that he's going to make an outstanding man. <clears throat> this could be the time that he, he proves it. Um, I think that's an outside shot that that happens. Although I think that if Henry may just be looking and say, okay, I'm going to get somebody to give him a better set, a, a better bag of groceries and let him cook. Mm-hmm. So I think after that, all bets are off, you know, but I think for 2024, he, he probably stays, but of course my predictions this year haven't worked out well, really well. So, you know, don't, don't take that for, don't take that one to the bank. Yeah. So the Red Sox, 10 games left. Yep. We play the White Sox. This, we are off tomorrow. Play the White Sox Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Have off Monday. Two, and two then, we, then we finish off. Uh, we play two more at home against Tampa. And then we're on our way to Baltimore. Yeah. For the final four. Uh one, George, how happy are you that the season's almost over? And and two, what are what are you looking forward to in these last ten games? And and what were what do you think our record's going to be? Okay, so as far as how I feel about it, you know the season being almost over, I'm disappointed. I had them in 88 wins, third place. You know, I thought they were going to, they were going to squeak in as the last wild card, right? Um, I'm disappointed, but, in, you know, in retrospect, if you, you know, all the things that could have gone wrong with the roster construction did, okay? Uh, and, you know, that, that's baseball. As far as the last 10 games, I wouldn't be surprised if they managed to go three and seven. Okay? That would not surprise me. They do better? Super. Okay, I'm I'm all for that, but I really see you know three and seven. Um, I think that the you know two out of three from Chicago. I don't I think Toronto's in it, so they're gonna you know they'll, they'll punish they'll punish the Red Sox. Depending where the Orioles are, you might be able to get one one game out of that. Okay, you know depending on where they are, if they if they clinch the if they clinch first place, then you know all bets are off. But yeah, um, that's that's kind of what I see. Three and seven, and look, get look really getting a good chance to look at the younger players. Yeah, yeah. after today, we're now we're in last place. Oh yeah, the division yeah. again. You know, uh, Tampa is only two games out of Baltimore, so yeah. we we play we play Baltimore four times. We play Tampa twice. Two. So you know, we could either help Baltimore. Or kill him. So, which would would you be kind of ironic? Uh, what was it a couple a uh, couple years ago? Oh, it was a little little while ago. The uh, last game of the season, and you know, Baltimore uh, killed our chances by winning. Yep. <laughs> so, Baseball's a weird game, man. It's just who the heck knows, right? Uh, but yeah, I. You know, it's this is the time of year when you're out of it. Take a look at the younger, younger players, and ha- you know, and let let's see what you got. You know, fresh is off. Um, you know, like Deval got his twentieth today. Okay, mm-hmm. so I think you can safely sit him a lot. You know, so ten games. You know, play him four. Uh, Abreu's due back. Um, you know. Uh, See if Rafi and Turner can get the 100 RBIs, but don't kill yourself in that chase, okay? That that stat is useless, you know, on a losing team. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. It, 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 It's going to be a wild two weeks for us. Yes. You know, uh, part of me wonders, how the heck did we beat the Braves three out of four games? In July, we could do mm-hmm. no wrong. Okay, it was a different team. The two openers in five days. It was like you know everything clicked. Everybody pulled together. After a while, you know that comes back to haunt you, and it did. It, it, you know it, it just you know the tsunami came and just ran them over. But you can't do that over the long haul, especially with what they were throwing out there. No. So 
Uh, me personally, uh, looking at the next upcoming days, I'm going to sit there and say, overall, we're 75 and 76 now, 10 games left. I'll go, I'll go five and five. We're, we're, we're going to okay. sit there and 80. 80 and 82. Okay. You know, but That's... let's sit there and push it. Let's, let's push it. Let's say we're going to break 500. 81 okay. and 81. We're, we're going to go six and five over those last 10 games. I don't know how. Maybe uh, Baltimore sits a few players. Right. You know, but even then, this ain't the NFL. You know, you, 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 if your players are hot, why are you going to sit them? So right. they can get cold for the playoffs? Yeah, and I don't see uh, I, I don't see Baltimore, you know, like they're not a veteran team. They're a, they're a young team, so you got to keep them energized. You get they're some hungry. rest, okay? But you got to keep them energized because they, they don't have that on-off switch that a veteran team has. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we saw it here. You know, on a couple of occasions, you know, throw it into, you know, throw it into a little speed, uh, put the cruise control on it, and you can go for a while and then turn it off and hit the postseason. But if they're a young team, I, I don't think that they have that in them. Yeah. Uh, speaking of young teams, George, I'm going to let you take the, take the floor with this one to start off. Our Greenville team. <laughs> oh, wow. They're the champs, baby. Yeah. Un- unbelievable. Um, I they won. Look, they won the first half of the the South Atlantic League with a thirty six and thirty record. Okay, they charge into the playoffs. They sweep. You know, it's a it's a best of three for both, right? Mm-hmm. Sweep two games in the semis. Sweep two games in the finals. They had an abysmal second half. They were twenty seven and thirty nine, finishing seventeen games out. But in the minor leagues, you know, it's the first half versus the second half. Right mm-hmm. on. Uh, so, you know, and the other thing that's really interesting to remember about that team is that that was a that roster was a revolving door, okay. With guys coming up from Salem, guys headed out to Portland, okay. Maya was on was in Greenville at the start of the season. He made it to Portland, okay. Um, you know, just just the the, the number of players that. That, that came and we've talked to a couple of them, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just been, it's been a revolving door. So the fact that they even, you know, they had a good team, in, you know, in the beginning of the season, but with all the changes and everything, the fact that they were able to put it all together after a really crappy second half is amazing. I mean, they got some couple, they got like three or four young players down there that are, you know, going to got some talent. And it's in Paulino, Mickey Romero, and Gilberto Jimenez. Okay. A couple of others too, but those are the three that um, I think have the best shot of, you know, getting to the majors. Not really, haven't really followed their pitching all that carefully, but for you know, for Morales, yeah, Morales, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's something I look at. Um, their their offensive numbers were pretty good. You know, 753 OPS, that was third in the South Atlantic League. Batting average was tied for first with Bowling Green at 259. Sixth in home runs, third in RBIs, third in um, runs. But where they got hurt was pitching, okay? Mm-hmm. They, they finished 10th in ERA at 5.02, ninth with a whip of 1.43, and batting average ninth at 254. So the, the pitching... And you'd expect that, I think, at that level. You know, guys, you know, the, the competition got a little bit stronger, um, you know, given the, the need for, you know, pitching changes. Guys probably got moved up to Portland a little bit faster than originally planned because mm-hmm. they were sending guys from Portland to Worcester because we were, to, you know, we were sending on a fast track from Worcester to, to Boston. So, you know, kind of, kind of should be expected when you look at that, but it's it would be interesting to see what happens. But I, I like the fact that they didn't quit. They they went in there and goes, "Hey, we got nothing to lose," and they won. Perfect. Yeah, two uh, two of their top pitchers, uh, Monegro and yep. Morales, are both really really well. Uh, you know, Noah Song was down there. 
yeah. that uh, that we finally got back from a long drawn out battle. Yeah, deal with Dave. Um, yeah, uh, Frank Herman. Yep. He he was down there on a rehab assignment, so you know he, he's another one. Uh, and then you know our our guys that we we talked to Joey Stock and uh, Macy O'Campbell, you right. know, the, they're they're also down there. Uh, it's just overall an amazing thing to sit there and see how successful our team can be. But it helped out that, like you said, in the early on when they won the first half championship, you know, yet they had Marcel Meyer down there. They had, uh, you know, the Roman Empire, Roman Anthony down right. there, uh, conquering, you know, the battlefields down there. It, it's uh, Nathan Hickey was down there, yep. you know, early on. Uh, I don't know if Hunter Dobbins started the season there or yeah, if he was in – or if he was over in uh, Salem. But, man, it's just – it's really crazy uh, to see that how that young team just pulled together yep. and won. That's what happens when you lose, you know. So, um, and they will lose. Gotta love that. So, yeah, uh, Hunter Dobbins. He was down. He started the season off <laughs> down there. I thought he was in Greenville. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it, it's, it's again, it's, it's really what has turned the Red Sox around in terms of making them a very deep organization now, you know, away from the major league level, you know, mm-hmm. the, the the talent that's been there, and they've been able to bring in has been excellent. I mean, they've got a five, number five ranking in the in the farm system. They've got some stud talent okay and hey you know that's all you can ask for because you know in 2019 there was nothing in the tank in the minor leagues they had there was nothing so yeah i i i said it the other day when i you know when my my column about uh you know when they fired bloom i said we all move vote of thanks but i don't think he's going to get it yet so yeah uh, how how long did we have to wait for names we heard in the farm system to come up? Like Tristan Casas. We waited forever for him to make it there. Yes. Um, who else was down there that you know, even Bobby Dahlbeck you know, for a while? Uh, uh Ryan Bayo. Ryan, Bayo, Ryan Mata. Yeah, Mata. Yeah, he's hit the injury train. Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, it it, it happens. He, I you know. even go even go before that. You know, Mookie Betts, uh, Ben Attendi, right? Xander Bogarts. Like, we would sit there and know these names in the farm system. It would take forever. Okay, we get one this year. We get one next season. You know, now. We have so much to look forward to where, okay, this year we got we got to see Valdez, Abreu. Uh, we got to sit there and see uh, a full season of Tristan Casas. We got to see uh, Sedon uh, Rafaela, yeah. you know, Bay, a, a full season of Bayo. Correct. Like all of a sudden, and that doesn't stop there. Right. Next year, we're going to see a full season of Sedon Rafael, uh, possibly. You know, a possible full season of Abreu. Uh, Marcelo Meyer may be coming up next year in September, you know, full about season, that time. Uh, full season of Connor Wong as your number one catcher. Yeah, full season yeah. of Wong. Like, like and, and it doesn't stop there. All of a sudden, the next season, 2025, oh, yeah. you know, if, if we still have these people, Nick Yorkie, yeah. you know, um, oh, our bullpen guys down there, uh, Christopher Troy, yes. you know, we, he could be coming up, uh, you know, uh, Roman Anthony, you know, uh-huh. Kyle Teal, 
like huh? they're we're looking at a lot of exciting fresh faces that get to come every year now because of what Heim Bloom did. You know, he right. put together this great farm system for us that you know it's a business. We might have to move a couple pieces, but we're still gonna have exciting players to look forward to every year, not one or two players, you know, every two years or every three years. So uh, what does that what, what does that mean, George? You know, you live up there close to Portland. You know, I get to see the Woo Sox when they play the Rail Riders and Lehigh Valley. Uh, you know, when you get to go to these games and the excitement at the games, that there's more people going there. Yes. The, you know, double A is where the prospects are. Okay. So, you know, when I go when I go to a Sea Dogs game, it's like it's like Christmas morning. You get to see you get to see young players trying to do the very best they can so they can make it to the next level. Okay, uh, there's you you know for the most part AAA is just a way station for these guys. Double is where they have to prove it, right? So mm -hmm. you know, good for them. Um, there and it's it is special to watch. Uh, you know, uh, for me also, you know, you get rehab assignments. You get to, you know, it's clear. You know, you're talking 90 miles from Boston. They send them up here, you know, if Worcester's out of town. Uh, you know, it's it's fun, okay? It really is. It's fun. And you get an appreciation. Because the other thing you do is you get to see everybody else's top talent when they come in. Mm -hmm. So that when they come in, you know, when they come up through the system and you see them in the major leagues, oh yeah, I saw him. You know, I saw him against the Sea Dogs. Yeah, he was a little bit of a special player. Yeah, this kid can run. He can hit. Uh, he's got you know, I'm ready a good fastball, a good curveball, whatever. You, know, you remember that stuff, okay? And that's important because it, you know, if you're a baseball fan, you want to know as much as you can. And it's so difficult now. You know, uh, you can't. Yeah, you know, there's no way you can watch every minor league game. You know, yeah. in the system, but you know, you just you try to do the best you can and follow, and you know, especially if they, you know, young kids are coming to town and you go, hey, I got that, I want to go see this kid play. I'm sure that my Marcelo Maya still uh, sold tickets for you know other clubs in the Eastern League, you know, because mm -hmm. he was a top ten, he was a, you know top ten MLB uh, prospect. So, yeah. Uh, now speaking of a little bit of selling tickets we've got an empire coming through our farm system yeah. and, you know, George, and the roman empire is coming uh i love it the shirts are coming i can't yeah. wait uh but let's talk a little bit about roman anthony because this kid's special yes Nine, 19 years old and he started 2023 in Salem, went to Greenville, ended up in Portland, uh, yeah. where probably he's going to start next season at, I'm guessing. Yep. And in Salem, he played 42 games, Greenville 54, and in Portland, he played 10 games. Mm -hmm. Now, man, just sit there and think. In, the, in just this season, where he's put all the pieces and the mechanics together, he's batting 272, 86 walks, 16 yeah. stolen bases, 64 ribbies, 14 home runs, 4 triples, 27 doubles, uh, an OPS, OPS of 869. Yeah. You know? And all that in 106 games. And what, yes. just here under 400 at bats. Yeah. So, like, he's he's a special talent. Well, I mean, we talked, you know, when we talked to Alex the other day, right? Mm -hmm. He said he's he's got he's a gifted, uh, he's a gifted hitter with a very special hit tool, and mm -hmm. you know, at 19 years old, he can make adjustments that you know players much older than he. Are, is and with much more experience either you know make after a while or don't make at all 
So, I mean, if he continues to rake like this, I think he's in Worcester by the middle of June and he could be the September call up. Now, if he can, now if he suddenly lights fire again and tears up Worcester and, and Portland, there's no telling, especially if they're in a pennant race and they want to, you know, they, they, they want to bring the bat in and see how it plays. Um, I mean, I hope they don't rush him too much. But I mean, he's he's made way stops. He's like, yeah, every time he stops someplace, it's like, yep, I conquered. You know, as we said, it's like the Rome, the Roman Legion, right? I conquered. Have a, have a nice day. Move on. So it, yeah, exactly. Like uh, looking at his his scouting grades, hits fifty five, power sixty, run fifty, arm fifty, field fifty, overall fifty five. Now this was his scouting grade that they gave him. At the draft. Yep. So, you know, he sit there in high school at Coors Field at the high school All American game. He blasted a 450 foot home run at Coors Field. You know, I honestly do not know or have any idea how he made it to the second round where we picked him up at. I, I don't know. Sometimes. Clubs are a little wary about uh, high school sluggers, you know. They they like okay, you know maybe, you know, it's the aluminum bats, or you know maybe he hasn't faced you know qual- enough quality pitching or whatever. I mean, you know, I, wouldn't you love to see a, a home run derby with him and Blaze Jordan? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be fun. But yeah, yeah and- I, I don't know how he slipped to the second round unless they were unless it's like I said, he's a high school kid. You know, yeah. I mean, does he does he fall off dramatically? You know, there's there's probably some evidence out there that that happens a lot. And you know, Red Sox guessed right, and so far have been the beneficiaries of a very shrewd decision. Well, uh, he moved through our uh, pr- prospect ranking very quick. Yes. To be the the number two prospect in the Red Sox organization. Not like only that, he was eighty nine, yeah. something like that last year. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, he's not only number two in our prospect, he's actually ranked in the top 100 in MLB. Yes. At 19 years old. You know, this kid, he's another left-handed bat. Like, we need to bring in veteran right-handed batters to complement all of our left-handed younger talent that's been that's been the thing they've been able to find quality left-handed bats but they haven't found the, the right-handed bat so i think that's that's part of what they have to do in the off season is make sure they have enough a quality right-handed bats to counterbalance the left heavy lineup so um yeah that's 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 really something they need to concentrate on besides pitching and defense yeah uh, because of our top five, three of them are left-handed bats. Mm-hmm. You know, Meyer, Anthony, and Kyle Teal. Yep. So Miguel Blease and Rafaela are, you know, righties. Right. Yeah. But Roman, Ant- Roman, looking at him in a game, he doesn't look all that big. But, man, he's 6'2 and 200 pounds. Like, yeah. That's a big 19 year old, and, and just think if he hits the weight room in the off season, you know, keeps working out, put some, yeah. you know, put some more muscle on that frame, like he he could very easily, you know, get to 210, 215. Um, yeah, he's kind of built like a a, a DB, you know, a bigger mm-hmm. DB because he's got speed to boot. And you know he's 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 not afraid of anything. Not the, the stage is never too big for him. He just comes up and says, "Okay, it's a baseball game." You know, so that's it. It was you know it's 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 exciting to have a player like that. You just keep you just really hope that you know he stays healthy and he continues to progress on the same trajectory that he has right now. And that if so, very special player. Much like we were anticipating Rafi would be when he came up. Yeah. So uh, let me check here real quick. 
Uh, but yeah, you know, Roman, Roman Anthony, I can't wait. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him come up September call ups, but I want to be, be appeased to, you know, see, wait, let him develop more, uh, let him get the confidence because I think that is what was Bobby D's biggest problem. Uh, the, the lack of confidence that management and mm-hmm. ownership uh, put in him. And they sent him down how many times off and on, you know, which messes with some, a young guy, player's head. And right. I, don't th- I don't think he fully recovered uh, from it. And I don't, I, I said the same thing when people were talking about sending Casas down uh, and I was totally against it. And all these young players, you know, Hey, I was on, I was on the Paul Goldschmidt train, put Casas back down on the minors and let Goldschmidt take over for this year. If I, I, when I thought that the Sox had a chance to do something, but I'm glad you know nobody listened to me on that one. Yeah. So, uh, but overall, well, what is your thoughts on on this kid Roman Anthony, uh, the Roman Empire, as you know we're going to start calling it? He's a special talent. Uh, you, you've seen it. His ascension through the system has been in, incredible. As I said, he shows no fear. He thrives at every level he comes in. You know, the it's like every stop in the minor leagues is not for a very long period of time. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. as I said, it's like the Roman Legion. He comes in, conquers, and moves on. You know, leaving his leaving his weight. You know. Pitchers shaking their head, so yeah, I mean he's he, he's a he's a true talent, and as you said, how did he make it to the second round? Yeah, so uh, guys, <clears throat> head on over to our website, check out our shirts, the merchandise we have. Uh, head on over to YouTube, sub, follow us. Uh, Anywhere you sit there and listen to op- uh, to your iPods, your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, iTunes, we're there. Download, tell a friend about us. Uh, George, any final thoughts? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like let's get the season over with. I like, you know, postseason baseball should be fun uh, this year watching uh, the Orioles, the Braves, uh, you know, and the like. Uh, and then when that when the World Series is over, you know, it becomes the annual for, an MLB formal and stupid time of the year when heavy contracts are given for no good reason at all. So, you know, that the general manager meetings are always fun. Um, I'm looking forward to camping myself in front of the television and watching those on MLB and waiting for the, the news of this signing and that signing and, you know, Stuff like that. Well, uh, I know. I hope this shows that what the Padres and the Mets did last year. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't need to go and put four hundred, you know, million dollar payrolls together. No. Guess what? Neither team's gonna make the playoffs. No. And, and let's go. Let's throw the Angels in there, where Adi Moreno just pulled the dumbest move in in history. Uh, not getting rid of Otani when he knew he was out of it. And instead, brings in a bunch of players thinking he can do it. Nothing happens. He DFAs them all. They all go to potential contenders. A couple of them are like, oh, Renfro got DFA'd in mm-hmm. Cincinnati. But, I mean, you know, t- talk about you – know, he didn't hide the fact that, you know, he was going to tank. I mean, I thought that was the whole idea that the MLB was going to crack down. But, again, as I've said a hundred times, Adi, nobody will ever confuse Adi Moreno – with Albert Einstein. So yeah, it, people sit there and complain about what uh, Heim Bloom did with Mookie. At least we got something in return. You what, what, what would the, the what would, right fielder? Are they what super would the stars? people? No. What would the people think if they, they just let Mookie walk? Oof. And we got nothing. You know what I mean? Well, that they, the same way that they felt when Xander walked. Yeah. Right. You know, but at least we had at the time Trevor Story to replace him. You know, well, we didn't know until, you know, weeks before spring training started 
that Trevor Story was going to need surgery. Right. You know, uh, we didn't know. Heck, we didn't know if, when he was coming back. You know, surprisingly, he came back by All Star game, and he showed us what a defensive shortstop. Oh. You know, from his time there until you know now, it's what it was supposed to have been looking like all season. Oh, for sure. I mean, he if he's a shortstop, right? Uh, what did uh, what did Kiki have? Fourteen, fifteen errors, right? Mm-hmm. You know that. Let's say fifteen errors. Uh, take down, take that down by two thirds. You know, Story's going to make an error. I mean, you know, nobody's perfect, but you yeah. know, four or five errors uh, that actually improves your defense. You now, if you just get Rafi to pay attention every once in a while and knock that down in half. You don't look so bad defensively. I mean, we do all the stupid things and you know, like missing cutoffs and you know, throwing to the center fielder and things like that at the wrong time. But I think that's Alfaro. Well, Alfaro. But the other thing is, you know, when we were kids, basics were drummed into us, right? Yes. Hit the cutoff, right? Um, you know, put, what to do with your body hit. in front of the ball. Which about, like, exactly okay. Don't sit there and, and try to go left and right to glove it because it's not good. Don't try to bare hand it if you don't think you can. Correct. Eat it. Okay. Or at the first base, get off the bag. Okay. Your job mm-hmm. is to save to save a ball going into stands or in a dugout and having the runner take an extra base. Get off the bag. Hello, Tristan Casas, are you listening? Uh, you know, that stuff is lost because it, the, the game is like so focused on on offense right now. Defense, uh, you know, and has been for a while since the money ball, you know, f- phase took over. His defense was not put at a premium. Okay, with the rule changes, it is required that you have good defense. You need a mm-hmm. strong um, catcher, right? Because now everybody's running. Okay, uh, you, you need. Without the shift, you need athletic middle infielders. Exactly. Uh, and you know, the, the game is, is shifting. I like the, the rule changes. I think that they've done what they're supposed to do. I think next year you're going to see a better brand of baseball now that it's sunk in. I think certain players aren't going to be able to you know, keep their spot on rosters because they haven't been able to adjust. And I think certain organizations certainly haven't been able to adjust, especially our neighbors – down in the Bronx. So, uh, you know, there's a lot to be said for, you know, did you, did you get on the train fast enough? Yeah. And I'm kind of willing and waiting to see about the off season because we had some dedicated people, uh, Yu Chang and Christian Arroyo, you know, didn't want to leave this organization because it meant so much to them. And they, when they were DFA, they opted to stay uh, down in AAA. You know what I mean? Uh, do they sit there and work on their mechanics, and, and do they get a, you know, another roster spot next year? Uh, you know, or yeah. because they got Valdez, you got Reyes, you know, all that could possibly Urias. play second base. Urias, they all can possibly play second base. Yep. Yes, I think. Uh, I think that, you know, they have, they're going to move on from those guys. I, I hope that they find – I think Christian Arroyo will find somebody because he's not a horrible second baseman, and, you know, he just needs hitting consistency. Yu Chang, as we said, it's all or nothing. He just swings for the seats. You know, he's, he's a stellar defensive player, but, you know, offensively it's all or nothing with him. He's, he hasn't learned that he should be a contact hitter. So. Yeah, and uh, on a quick final uh, note, Let's sit there and talk real quick about history in the making with Curtis Martin. Sox history in the making. Uh, His ERA is dirty, uh, ridiculous. You want to talk about about the pickup of the offseason? My God. Who who saw that coming? At 50 point DC, DC sit there and he, he said that was our best pickup. The DC called uh, Kurt, uh, Chris Martin. Uh, okay. At 50 point yeah. uh, one innings, he's pitching. He's his ERA is a 1.07, a four and one win loss record in 54 appearances. 
46 mm-hmm. strikeouts, a whip 1.05. That is crazy. That, that's obscene. Like his and, ERA and, for his last for the last 30 games, 0. 0.34. Ooh, yike! You know he and he does it with such like a minimal effort. He's so free and easy when he throws, right? He's it's like yeah, this is he's a pleasure to watch. Yeah, like he's just without him being in the back of our bullpen this year, we wouldn't have came, even came close to the amount of wins we had. No, no. He and Ken, he, no. he and Ken, and Kenley has had a couple of a couple of stinkers, but overall, he's done you know what you expect him to do. Yeah. So, George, want to thank you for coming on again, like always on Wednesdays. Yep. Uh, it's uh, really appreciative guys you know like i said check out the merch on our website the link is in our twitter bio uh into, check out george's into, sub stack the, there you go or if you're into adult beverages the gla- he, we've got glassware for you oh yeah george is it, tell everybody uh real quick about what your article this week is on in sure. your so i'm doing a three-part series on um what it takes to spend $237 million. <laughs> and it's not as easy as you think. Uh, part one was released this morning. Part two is going out tomorrow morning. And part three will go either tomorrow night or Friday morning. Okay. Uh, you know, I covered the, the ins and outs of what constructs a 40 man roster, uh, the, the, the money that you owe people, and it's, you know, it, it counts against you. Uh, today, the article that's coming out tomorrow talks about the fact that the 40 management roster is actually a 46 man roster because of the people on the 60 day DL. So, if you want to add somebody, you've got to, it's not just subtracting off the 40, you've got to make some additional decisions to get down so you can attract either, tr- you know, trade candidates or free agency. And then, you know, the money that's involved with that. And then at the end, you get 237 million, but, you know, 100, almost 130 is spoken for right now. Mm-hmm. So it's not, you know, you're 107 left. Uh, so, you know, make a couple of moves, you suddenly have more money to deal with. So that that's the, the, the focus on part two. And part three is, and I'm going to include some of the things we talked about the other day on, you know, the, the postseason GM stuff, you know, potential moves we can make to get better. And, you know, whether it be trades, free agency, um, you know, who to move, who not, you know, I mean, your you know your deal with the Brewers was outstanding. I mean, that was that, that talk about that's a gutsy move, okay. But if you pull it off, it's right up there in Red Sox history, you know, with the Veritek and uh, Derek Lowe's fleecing of uh, mm-hmm. Seattle. So that yeah, would be the, outstanding. The, the only bad part is 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 uh, I circle everything around. Uh, the Roman Empire, Roman Anthony. So, well, you know, there's there's other players. Uh, they they need a much more balanced lineup, and mm-hmm. you know we've got to take a hard look at that. Plus, lately they've been absolutely abysmal with runners in scoring position. So, yeah, it, it, it's bad when you see Bobby Dahlbeck on base and, and other people, you know, leaving him there. So, but guys, thanks for uh, listening and check you out next time on the Pesky Podcast.